Welcome everybody to Wednesday Night Modern here at the Nerd Rage Gaming Storefront. We are in our final week of our 12-week Modern League, and we nearly know all of the fine players out there who are going home with a good chunk of uh, pocket change. Pocket change. <laughs> Just a little bit of pocket change for these fine folks. Our lovely Haviva is going to give these players the A-OK. -okay. I'm going to give you a quick rundown. Uh, what in the heckins they do be playing? We got Isaac here on the right side. I mean, let's be real. Playing what Isaac's been jamming for a while here in the uh, Goryo's Vengeance. Uh, combo control, however you want to say it, however you want to mark it. But the untapped land into grief uh, <laughs> speaks louder than anything else. As uh, May's hand is being revealed here, May playing mono red energy. Cards like Party Thrasher, Amped Raptor, Galvanic Discharge. Really trying to see just how far you can push all these new powerful red cards. Absolutely, yeah. It's our final week here. May is in the top 16, um, but I think she's uh, counted herself out of the running for top eight. So playing something mm. uh, different than her usual bread and butter merfolk. Uh, Isaac, of course, very used to the deck he's playing, so we'll see if the yes. familiarity with uh, their own decks uh, plays any sort of part in this game. What's hard here is you see May took May's turn, played out the mountain, Isaac rebounded this ephemerate, got to take the unstable amulet, but Isaac missing a land drop himself. May hitting an amped raptor. You want to talk about a reset? It's an uncastable blood Ooh. moon. Ooh, yeah. Wow, a blood moon would have put Gorios in a <laughs> really, 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 really bad spot. But instead, uh, May left with just a single party thrasher. And the another ephemerate, Isaac, Ooh, please. We'll see a Chandra. The Torch and of take Defiance. The Ashling. Chandra Torch of Defiance, the number one Planeswalker people said was missing from Bloomboro, as they did no red Planeswalkers for the Imagine Critters, oh, and no Chandra. What creature, what what animal do you think she would be? Lizard. A lizard? Oh, that, that seems good. I dig that. Okay, can we talk lore for a second while May grinds through this unstable amulet, finding another Amped Raptor? Oh, boy. That's the fourth Ampter. Just <laughs> saying, top like 10 <laughs> cards, three Ampter. You'll love to see it. Life total staying at 12 to 13 after fetches and some combat steps. In the Bloomboro lore, did you read it to you, though? I did not. It's no, okay. I know they live in Valley. Sure, that sounds right. Valley was <laughs> threatened by Dragonclaw, I think. Like, that's the big bad, potentially? Yeah, they're they're threatened by the big old monsters that you see in this set. As a Galvanic Discharge takes out this grief, May really needing to get an answer like this to take out this single card, this only threat that Isaac has. Mm -hmm. In the lore... We're on the hunt for Jace, right? Because he's in his little villain arc with his love of his life, Vraska. Right. And the characters in the lore say that Vraska is a lizard. But the Imagine Critter card, Vraska is a snake. Well, yeah, because her head, is, she's a gorgon. So her yeah. head is snakes. So that would make more sense to me. So why is, the, why is she a lizard in the lore as uh, oh, great question. <laughs> Isaac here continuing to use the grief from hand alongside pitching in a track. So just try to continue to whittle May down, but Isaac themselves down to seven, two Ampters in play, which is four damage, mm -hmm. and if we cast anything from Exile, these Amulets are going to continue to poke away at Isaac oh. and double Barbarian Ring. All right. Barbarian uh -oh. Ring can sacrifice to deal damage, right? Yes. It, in fact, does exactly that. <laughs> sacrifice to deal damage. Isaac will play a Tainted Indulgence. Try and get something going here. A very important thing to, to think about, notice, is this Gorio's shift to having Psychic Frogs in it now also means that the deck is no longer playing Faithful Mending, the kind of only main deck life gain mm -hmm. outside of the big monsters. But Isaac here finally putting together, having a Gorio's, and I think we're trying to target something in the yard that we discarded off this indulgence a moment ago. Yeah, maybe the she priority is. window to activate the amulet. Atraxa will be the grab from oh. the Gorio's Vengeance, though, and Isaac will begin to assemble a pile yes. of cards. What's hard is this Atraxa is going to attack right here, right now, with haste and lifelink, mm -hmm. putting him from three all the way back up to ten and making this incredibly difficult for May. I would say for a mono red deck, seven points of mm -hmm. life gain is usually enough. Yes, but Isaac here not finding Ephemerate to be able to keep this Atraxa or draw new cards, drawing uh, instead another Gorios and a Prismatic Ending to go with the two endings already in hand. Isaac is kind of running out of gas if May can keep the engine flowing. Yeah, if he had had the Ephemerate to keep the Atraxa in play, May wouldn't be able to mm. have any blockers. 
Maze using the galvanic discharge as a energy ritual before the Atraxa goes away. Mm -hmm. We're casting it off the unstable amulet, poking Isaac for uh, for one damage. Now using the the barbarian ring, but very importantly, May converted that galvanic discharge into three energy so that we can keep amuleting. All right, I see the sort of engine that she's built here. Lots lots of little fiddly things with this energy deck. A lot of different pieces mm -hmm. that you gotta know how they go together. Because the, the Amped Raptor, the Unstable Amulet, and the Galvanic Discharge kind of is our little energy package mm -hmm. that they all kind of feed into each other. And then May's topping out the curve with this Party Thrasher that we've got here now in play. It is still, I would say, similar to a kind of play style that she likes, though. Mm -hmm. um, it's not just creatures turning sideways. There's some more fiddliness to it, a little more yes. tempo style type of deck. But at the end of the day, you're killing your opponent through combat damage. Right. It is... a. Uh, the one of the boogie words of magic of tempo, right? Mm -hmm. Of like, put my creatures in play, attack, and interact with you just enough to keep pushing. Mm -hmm. uh, Merfolk is kind of one of the best at doing that sort of strat. I would say and so. May employing that strategy here, played an Amter, played a second one, kind of just kept turning these sideways while dealing with what Isaac had going on. Isaac slightly whiffed on the big attracts of hits, and now we're running out of life total if you're Isaac. Here comes the Falaji Archaeologist. I know a big That's uh, the game. part of you, but it won't be enough. May will take game one in our points race for this Ugh. week. Let's look at the leaderboard real quick to refresh my memory. Isaac is sitting in the third spot at 103 points. Jeez. May is sitting in 14th with 76 points. I do want to remind folks at home that uh, after tonight, we will be dropping the two lowest scores from every single player to help with people that uh, have life situations or just don't want to come a week, so uh, you're allowed to drop your two lowest scores. So people sitting at the top of the leaderboard are generally going to go down in points, except for Isaac, who has missed exactly two weeks. So mm -hmm. his score is what you see. Some of these gamers out here have basically done the math, done the timing to figure out just the amount that they can miss. I heard a lot of people last week being like, oh, I can't make next week. I need to like 3-1 this week to hold my spot because I'm going to have to miss mm -hmm. next week. Uh, a lot of folks chatting... Giving them, giving them something to play for, which, I mean, who doesn't love that? Absolutely. Our players are playing for seventeen hundred over $1,700 in-store credit, paying out to the top eight. Of course, that first spot will get the most. So that's <laughs> right. what players are hoping for, but some are just ha happy to crack into that top eight. Let's take a look at Agorio's Vengeance deck list here while players are sideboarding. Uh, neither players have submitted deck lists for this mm. match, but we have grabbed some off of MTG Goldfish, and we can look at an example here. Uh, different sorts of tools in uh, Goro's Vengeance sideboard. Leyline of the Void, Leyline of Sanctity, some other cards as well I can't quite see. We're looking at things like maybe a Damping Sphere, which is always interesting to put artifact cards in your Goro sideboard because it makes your Atraxa hits better. So although it might be a one-of, you can usually dig pretty deep, not for this matchup. Force of Negation, Wrath of the Skies, Prismatic Ending, Consigned Memories to Fairies. To Fairy, very interesting. If you're a little worried about these Amped Raptors and a lot of things happening in instant speed to keep you kind of fiddly out of Maze Deck, can have it if you want it, but not definitely needed. Uh, not like when you're trying to bring something in against a living end or a rhinos. For this Teferi, it'll interact with kind of one-ish card. Wrath of the Skies, though, you are playing against an aggro slanted deck. This Wrath of the Skies kind of taking what used to be the Supreme Verdict sideboard slot. You're usually casting at that same mana cost of white, white, and then two into your X, but that allows you to clean up other pieces, like maybe we'll have cards like Unstable Amulet and the likes. They'll be able to be swept up by that Wrath of the Skies. And it's a sorcery, which is really not nothing when you're doing your Atraxa hits. You kind of really just have Thoughtseize mm. in your main deck That's and Prismatic Ending. Yeah. And it's so fun to have fiddly cards in your sideboard you can kind of add in that fill in gaps in your Atraxa hits in that same sort of thought. I imagine at least we'll see some copies of Wrath of the Sky, depending on how many Isaac has, and maybe some forces just to start uh, stem the bleeding of both the removal and the amulet package out of May's deck. But May is going to continue to try to... Uh, attack the game as fast as they possibly can, but thankfully Gorios usually puts a uh, turn two and a half ish uh, seven seven life linker in play. So we'll see. Yeah, uh, well, all good points there. We'll get back down to the action here as players are shuffling up. I think Isaac kept seven. May is looking at her second hand here. Oh, both players six is all right around. There. Tucking one and we'll be off in game two with Isaac on the play. Like you said, he had a pretty slow start game one. Mm -hmm. Generally, from Agorio's deck, we see that very quick start with that big attract. Yes. So he got it a couple turns later, and it was too late at that point. Isaac kept the one land, but I have just scam for three turns in a row, mm -hmm. and was then kind of forced to do an untapped second mana source to start like catching back up. 
And instead of trying to weave in some surveils, so we see Isaac instead this game getting to start that three to four surveillance in this deck, allowing you to have these turns to just make a plan. Churn through, mill some cards, not mill some cards, keep a Psychic Frog on top. Exactly. That's what he's going to draw for turn there. May just playing a Mountain and Passing, and Psychic Frog will be the first spell of the game. The Frog. Uh, this card replacing the Faithful Mendings in people's Gorios list. You can sometimes see anywhere from like two to four-ish, maybe some Mendings, maybe not, maybe some Priest, depending on how the people want to flavor their deck to taste. But this allows Isaac a discard Atlas for this Atraxa that's just sitting in hand. Absolutely. This game looking a lot different than the first. May hasn't played anything yet, but after the Psychic Frog's attack, uh, it will be galvanically discharged, Ooh, though Isaac <laughs> might have a response as well. He's going to pitch the Atraxa with the Psychic mm -hmm. Frog ability first, pump it up. And discard our Water Grave. Now, with it being at four toughness, I imagine May is going to possibly use this discharge to just bank a full three energy and instead deal none to the frog. And that's what she will do. So the frog survives, does a little bit more damage in combat, bringing May down to 17. Oh, and off the frog, we drew the Gorios. So just getting that one Ooh. card deeper, that's going to allow Isaac most likely-ish around May's end step to fire that off. And instead, we're going to play this Priest of Fell Rites. Ooh, let me pull that up. I'm not familiar with that card. Pay three life, tap it, uh, reanimate a creature only as a sorcery, and then five mana unearth it, giving it haste to be able to do this ability again from the yard. This is go. kind of the flexiest slot out of this deck. Some people are playing it as like a fifth, maybe sixth Gorios, depending on, but it definitely plays a lot, like quote unquote, worse, right? It's not doing the Gorios play pattern, mm -hmm. but it uh, pitches to grief, pitches to ephemerate, and mm -hmm. sets you up to Gorios. This attracts a proper into play. Indeed, powerful stuff here. It tracks up. Love probably, this. Probably one of the best creatures it's, in the format. It's <laughs> my, uh, my, probably my favorite card. Resolving this feels uh, so good. Absolutely. Just being able to put 10 cards onto the battlefield, even if you don't get to keep them all, is just such a powerful effect. You usually draw four to five of them. Mm -hmm. So, you know, how deep do you need to dig for it to be Demonic Tutor? Um, Honestly, yeah. Especially if you're playing lots of four of yes. you're, you're bound to hit some. Or even, like, we see Isaac here hitting Force of Negation. A lot of these decks will put a single Force of Negation in the deck because it's really good to find once you're, you're like, starting to churn. Mm -hmm. That I've had games of this deck where I cast Ephemerate on my Atraxa. Like, I cast, I think, three different Ephemerates on my Atraxa in response to a one ring to find my one of Force of Negation <laughs> and pitch just one of the random blue cards I got from all the other triggers. You dug 30 cards deep? Oh, yeah. That's great. Wow. And now attracts a plus this big frog coming in. And May went quick to the life total, so maybe not looking to block with our 2-2 Goblin Shaman. I don't think so. I don't think so. It's uh, It can't block the attracts, so that's for sure. Right. And the revealed cards, we took a Force Negation, not an Ephemerate. So I think May is taking game actions under the assumption this attracts is going to go away. But this fetch for planes, I think, says otherwise. Ooh, yeah, I think this is going to be a pretty quick game here as well. Isaac's got a pretty dominating presence at this point with this Atraxa and the Psychic Frog. He's got another Psychic Frog in hand, too, if May mm -hmm. deals with this first one. Is he a Falaji Archaeologist resolution? Another Psychic Frog. Can't grab that. <laughs> Instead, we get to grab this Gorios. And remember, there's a Priest of Felrites that's just kind of sitting in the graveyard. That once we get to five mana, we can bring back things like Grief, Solitude, Frog, alongside bringing back stuff like Atraxa. Back on May's turn now, seeing so just six points of health. Mikey likes her basic choice. I like the juxtaposition between the basics in her Merfolk deck and the basics mm. in this one. These very old school, classic old border. In Your her Merfolk deck, she's got the pixel snow. The bench nook pixelated yeah. basics. And Isaac taking it down. This is the commanding game for this Gorios deck. The power of Psychic Frog getting in for just enough of damage to start applying pressure. Drawing Isaac an extra card, just happened to be the Gorios, and set up the whole plan perfectly. Mm -hmm. it mulliganed a little bit better there, kept uh, maybe a loose hand in game one. Mulliganed to six, yeah. found a solid hand, and was able to pilot it to a win there. We'll go to game three. May, I don't think, I, I tried to look for a deck list for a <laughs> mono red uh, energy deck list. I do have one for a Boros energy list that we can look at while players shuffle here. Um, Cards here of relevance, things like the Blood Moons, mm -hmm. the Amped Raptors, the Galvanic Discharge, the Fable of the Mirror Breakers, maybe even the Ragavans. Uh, at some points, I even saw people playing like Blazing Root Walla in the Mono Red <laughs> decks, so you never know what these folks are going to be bringing. The one I would say maybe guarantee 
is that there are definitely these copies of Harsh Mentor in the sideboard. Mm -hmm. I like this Boros Energy has two Giganthas in the sideboard. No way that that's wrong. Oh, interesting. interesting. And then, do you uh, see this like card? Uh, this little baby Blood Moon on the side? This one, yeah. What's that doing there? Interesting. I think Giganta took its spot at the table. Ooh, all right, let's get back to the action, though. Players are oh my going goodness. a little bit fast. Pardon me. Sorry, Amster. Me. Big hits. Here we go. <laughs> Two energy, not a now that happened last time. Oh man, oh man. I guess it's just our two mana two one first striker. <laughs> That's all you get. Um, Isaac will surveil again for his first land drop. So I find this very important. You want to slowly learn the tells of what your opponent is doing based on their game actions. Mm. When I play Gorios, I frequently want to make sure I get a white source off my first land, have access to ephemerate mana if I happen to rip the like. Typically, you have, like, two of the three pieces of scam, and you're always one draw step away. Mm -hmm. So I try to typically fetch out my white sources. So Isaac here, we can see Drew is plain, so it's incentivized to get the Undercity Sewer. Um, but I'm still not even interested in playing my planes out for a while, because I want to make sure I have frog mana. Okay. Which then incentivizes me to want to get a white source, so that if I want access to Ephemerate at any point in time, I have it. So if I'm May, I'm at least trying to glean maybe just a little that Ephemerate might not be there. But uh, Isaac's Ooh. got time to dig, and we're starting with a Gorios or Wrath of the Skies taking the Gorios. Big message to May. Big message to May. I wonder if she notes the two uh, lands that don't make white mana and mm -hmm. evaluate that or think that we know he has a Wrath of the Skies in hand already. And here, May playing an Inti, very powerful card. Oh, yeah. Letting us uh, churn through our deck here, exiling this Barbarian Ring, but also making the Amp Raptor an extra Raptor. power. Mm -hmm. Giving that thing Trample? <laughs> you think you're blocking? That's always the weird part about Inti, right? You, it's such a good effect, and it, you, you worry about the resolution of that yes. part, and then you go to block, and you're like, oh, right. Also Trample. At the very end of all that. On top of the discard a card, exile a card, give it a counter, there's mm -hmm. also the Trample. Yeah, for a two-drop. It's and just Inti's, a lot of stuff. It's just going to keep going. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we know Isaac's got a Gorios in hand. He's also got that Wrath of the Sky. We'll see him pitch it to the a Solitude, solitude though. It looks like this is probably in the Inti pre-combat, and it is indeed. Mm -hmm, so you don't get that um, attack trigger. Right, before they're all turned sideways. And this Solitude not being scammed. Yes, Isaac. <laughs> so what we're doing is, with our Solitude sacrifice on the stack, mm -hmm. Isaac's going to dig as far as he can to see if he can get an Ephemerate try to scam here finds an ephemerate flicks the solitude but it gets bolted mm. all right so may will be able to go to attacks here with just the Falaji on the field uh she will bring isaac down to 12 party she'll be at thrasher. 18 can you bring a party thrasher this is the new mh3 card sure. that i've yet to really see churn but i know once it starts it's very hard to stop and Hold Isaac, on. bringing back the Satraxa to Gorios. It Here we go. Wanna, there we go. The non-creature spells from Exile have Convoked. That includes the cards Exile to the Amulet. In the beginning of your pre-con main phase, you may discard a card. If you do Exile the top two, choose one, play it. Remember, that card's going to have Convoked from the Thrasher. Isaac, now we see, resolving the Satraxa trigger, grabbing just Ephemerate, Pluta Delta, or not Pluta, Flooded Strand, and our choice from among this pile of creatures... Choosing maybe a frog. Mm. Frog, I think. And Grief is going to be the pick. It's hard, right? With May only at three cards, if you feel like you can kind of control what's already in play, then it might be time to go after the hand. Indeed. And the Atraxa in play with the presumed ephemerate means we know that we can get a little deeper. You can probably find a card to pitch to this grief, if not already the Grizzle Brand in your hand. Sure. And Isaac's just going to dig in even deeper. There you go. Flip over the full stuff. <laughs> Isaac's trying to do it the nice way of sorting it while you grab the pile. Mm -hmm. I ra I I was gonna say it's it's too many um thoughts at once, mm -hmm. right? Do one and then the other and then the last, you know. I use directly the point where our two playmats meet and go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Mm -hmm. Reveal to just all of us. <laughs> scoop it up, separate it in my brain, and then go choice. And they're like, okay, cool. Yeah. I think that's a good way to do it. I think an underutilized part of the game mat is where the two play mats meet. Mm -hmm. It feels like where where <laughs> where the stack goes. <laughs> May having this uh, amulet stripped from the hand, the leftovers, den of the bugbear, and fable of the mirror breaker. Mm-hmm. 
And this attracts a here to stay. Dug 20 cards deep. Isaac refilled the hand. Pretty good blocker against these creature may have. Oh, and Isaac's at 19. He is, yes. <laughs> Best of luck to your mono red deck, right? We're discarding we'll see, the we'll den. See. Eggs on these two cards to the Thrasher. Do we want Aether Hub? Do we want Inti? I think this mono red deck has a little more staying power than mm -hmm. like a straight up burn deck, for example. Yeah, uh, Fable, Thrasher, Amulet, and even the Amptor giving you just, just enough card advantage. You have basically 16 cards to keep it moving. Indeed. We'll see her try and figure her way out of this. We'll play another Amped Raptor. See what she hits here. An party Ashling. Thrasher. Oh, no. It's p sorry. Party Thrasher. I keep calling it Ashling. I'm sorry. Oh, no. Not Ashling. The Pilgrim? Yeah. The art's very similar. Ephemerate again on Atraxa. <laughs> nope. That was on Flogic because you want to attack with your Atraxa. Yeah. And if you flicker, you can't attack. True. Part true. of that Ephemerate play patterning. Because this Atraxa is basically going to try to do all the work this game. Mm -hmm. But Isaac has his Grizzlebrand in hand. I think Isaac's trying to figure out, do we have a way to get it into the bin and Gorios it back into play to do the full lethal this turn? We can't. Big hits with the Atraxa made down to four. I don't think you need to either. It's sometimes just the thought of like winning the game now versus the winning the game next Ooh. turn. Especially if you don't know. But these endings <laughs> just clear the board. Two prismatic endings will clean up the party thrasher on May's side. Draw a card. Sure It'll a be mountain. a mountain. And a fable. And a tutu. Oh, man. Maybe you won't attack. Pass. Yeah. And that's the <laughs> game. Isaac taking on two games to one. Kept a sketcher in the very first game and allowed May to fight back. But the overwhelming card advantage of this Gorio's deck is why it has been here to stay. Even with only one, maybe two-ish MH3 cards in it. Doesn't matter. Atraxa is just that powerful. Yeah, who needs Nadu when you can just wallop your opponent with a big ol' <laughs> angel? Well, yeah. No, you don't need it. That's what I'm. That's what I said. I'm still trying to figure out how to put them together. I'll let you know if I oh, figure it oh out. Oh, lord. Okay. <laughs> well, you see. Well, Nadu's why... <laughs> a legend. To Gorio's back into play. You see. For sure. For sure. You you see why Isaac is at the top of our leaderboard. Outstanding play there from May as well. My backup match looks like it has ended, too. So we'll talk about a quick couple of things before we head into a break. Excuse me. Just finding all my stuff here. I am producing tonight for those. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Every unaware. Everybody in chat, please say uh, thank you, Haviva. Thank you, Haviva's <laughs> in chat. Thank you, Haviva. We're running a little short staff this week due to Gen Con. People getting their travel on early. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'll be there, too. I hope you all are excited for the best four day four days of gaming. gaming i think that's the tagline in indianapolis yeah baby but we got some good old gaming here at nerd rage gaming too we support five full games of organized Woo! play we're adding a sixth soon we got union arena coming what is, what even is i've never heard of it. go ahead union, union arena is another bandai game you don't have to worry about it it's a band no. <laughs> unless you like i don't know demon slayer or hunter uh, hunter i see yeah it's that kind of game i see yeah, but uh, in addition, <laughs> in addition, we offer Magic, Pokemon, Digimon, One Piece, and Lorcana, and here are all the different ways that you can play it at our store. We have Shimmering Skies pre-release next week. We have, oh, what's the Digimon set called? It's coming out this Friday. It's called something. You can come get boxes for it. It's super cool. <laughs> yeah, we'll have pre-release for that on Monday. Yeah. We also have the new Pokemon. Uh, collections coming out. The booster Ooh. bundles come out later in the month, but the collections for Pokemon come out this Friday too. And of course, we'll be streaming Pokemon tomorrow on Thursday as well. We have some wonderful commentators for that, so hit the follow button so you don't forget to check that out tomorrow. With that being said, we'll head into a quick break. We'll be right back. See y'all soon. Bye! Welcome back, folks. We're in round two of Wednesday Modern here at the Nerd Rage Gaming Storefront. We got our top uh, two players. Excuse yeah, me. There's like 2v3, I think, something yeah, like that going on. Yeah, seed two versus seed three. Marty versus Isaac. We saw Isaac on camera last uh, round playing Gorios, and we got Marty in the booth. We haven't seen too much of him, but I'm, I'm going to go get them started. Yeah, Marty here, uh, we are going to feature round one because he's typically playing control, so we put him on backup. But Marty got the round one bye in week 12 of the league uh, to put himself in this spot. I mean, I'm just going to say it. Marty is dressed to the nines. I don't know what that is that he's wearing, but boy, is it beautiful as a turn one. Oh, yeah. That's the secret layer pre-order. <laughs> Uh, we got Jabor Cardboard over here. Mm -hmm. Isaac taking a turn one surveil, binning. Oh, what is it? That godless shrine. Setting themselves up. 
Folks, this could be a long game, but this frog could be a problem. Yeah, it could put it away a little bit faster. Of course, Barty has a lot of tools in his deck to take care of pesky creatures and other oh. things as well. Probably got some sort of counter magic to deal with the mm. uh, on the stack Gorio's Vengeance or Wrath of the Sky. I, no, excuse me. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, and Marty had a subtlety <laughs> with a force that we could have pitched, but that makes us a frog problem for later, and we don't have that answer. So instead of uh, kind of two for zeroing himself, uh, Marty going to hold on to these cardboards and strap in for a long game, but this frog's going to be a problem. I see a one ring in Marty's hand as well as a force of negation. Yeah, there's, there's two, two rings. rings. Two rings. Wow. Go to attacks here from Isaac. Marty's shaking yeah. his head already. But if I'm Isaac, I'm oh, basically man. just riding this frog until Marty tells me to stop. Like, <laughs> this is just the protect the queen strat of using this here psychic frog to push as much damage as you possibly can. Mm -hmm. Draw for turn from Marty will be a Wrath of, of the, the Skies. skies? Mm. Can't play it quite yet. We'll just pass back with an uncracked fetch and two open mana. Yeah. Isaac will fetch on his end, step down to 16. And we'll have to see as we see Isaac getting a second surveil in here. Mm -hmm. Marty kind of has this uncracked fetch represent maybe looking to force, maybe looking to surveil, depending on what actions Isaac tries to take. But Gorio's being an instance can be really rough for this force negation. Marty might burn a lot of mana. Isaac seems to be flooding a little bit. Got a few car uh, lands in <laughs> hand there. That can be fuel for the frog. That's right. Though. You can never flood when you got the frog. Flood versus Frog. Frog always win. Mm -hmm. We'll play out his fourth land. And tap out to cast a, a hardcast hard grief. grief. Wow. And Marty not quite at the stage of being on hardcast subtlety to kind of fire back. But debating the evoke. This is kind of the weird thing, right? You're going to lose the card to grief anyways. But do you kind of want to negate Isaac's next draw step? Kind of make him put this grief back? I, I like this tab out from Isaac. Generally, you don't tap out against a blue player, but this is really aggressive. He puts mm. him on a force negation, which can't hit a creature spell like Grief. Right. But he will pitch one force to subtlety the Grief. And Isaac putting it right back on top. Mm -hmm. Just going to rinse and repeat next turn. But Marty trying to buy time to cast these rings, because if we can get there, it can buy a lot of time. Yeah, I think he has a land in hand, so he can he can go ahead oh, yes. and just cast that if he wants. We can use this turn to surveil to kind of set up our next draws for the next couple of turns, slam our ring, and worry about the problems like two turns from now. There you go. We'll fix the mana a bit. We'll grab a Thundering Falls off the <laughs> fetch there. This deck is trying to cast Flage. Mm -hmm. I'm getting my Flage signed this weekend. I'm really excited. Oh. I forget the name. I think it's, I want to say Alex Dos Diaz. Yeah, that sounds, sounds I'm like I'm they pull it up. I'm going to pull it up. Hold on, hold on. Here we Marty go. Right here, big rips. Even drawing a solitude, a very good card. Oh no, that's along. the wrong flage. How do I get a different flage? Oh, you got the one with the face. I the got the big, wrong the big one. Face. <laughs> it's the borderless one that yes. I'm getting signed. The um, profiles, I think, what they like to call mm -hmm. those ones. Mm -hmm. Marty here sending this Arid Mesa to the yard. Most likely picking up maybe a Steam Vents or a Sacred Foundry. Kind of complete this mana here. And I imagine slam this ring. Maybe even the planes. Gonna go but a little bit deeper, find oh, a shock land instead. Probably Sacred Foundry. Get a second red source and a second white source all in one shot. Because Flage flashback is double red, double white, right? Double red, double white. And here is the Sacred Foundry. I think Marty, uh, a little unfamiliar with the the beautiful <laughs> Unfinities, probably scrolled past the Sacred Foundry a few scrolled times. Scrolled past. <laughs> oh, yeah, you know. <laughs> IRL scrolled past mm -hmm, it. Mm -hmm. But slam it. There you go. Does Isaac draw the force? Doesn't look like it, and we're digging deep. Cascade bluffs. Is that what that was? I couldn't tell that. Art. That's for fixing the mana because of just how hard it is to cast Counterspell into Flage. Mm, oh, okay. I dig it, yeah. actually. So uh, typically we'll see kind of a one of Cascade bluff and a one of uh, Mystic Gate to allow both the filter into Counterspell and half of Flage. In the face of protection from everything, Isaac will opt to cast the grief mm -hmm. anyway for no effect to just get a body on board. Yeah, put the clock in play because if Isaac discards a single card to this frog, we create a two-turn clock. Um, and even now, the ring kind of helps Isaac speed up the clock. Is there... Remind me the exact text of Wrath of the Skies. Is it... It's a conditional wrath? So, you, it's X white white. You get X energy. Then you can spend any amount of energy to destroy... That CMC and lower of artifacts, enchantments, and creatures. Okay. So, so we have a four drop and a two drop. Right. So the, the frog 
not long for this world if mm-hmm. Marty wants that, but the grief very far away. A little bit further, yeah. I, I would have to assume that they mm-hmm. a control a control energy deck starts to rack up a bit of, of energy at some point. Marty will play the Cascade Bluffs as land for turn and play that Wrath, Wrath of the Skies. Two. Just basically one for wanting this Psychic Frog. Um, and in this control deck as well, very important to notice, Marty played Preordain on turn number one. Mm-hmm. Some of these decks will play the tune the narrative to like juice up the energy package, but you get no selection that way. Mm. So it looks like Marty might be leaning at least some number towards Preordain to get that selection on your cantrip instead of the energy. Yeah, we'll be able to look at full 75s uh, during sideboarding here. Marty did submit a deck list, so we'll get a look at that. Once this game is over, back on... Isaac's turn life total sitting at 11 to 15 now. Definitely slower pace of play than mm-hmm. we saw in round one from the Gorios player in the right. face of a mono red deck. So that's that makes a lot of sense there. But we do, in fact, have this Grief, which tacks for three a turn. Mm-hmm. And this Ring's going to do a lot of damage to Marty as well. And, you know, we're getting this Caster Vision into Marty's hand. There's not any life gain there. So this Grief plus the Ring's going to push a hard amount of damage. And here's Gorios. Yep. Just playing your spells into a tapped out uh, control player. Of course, yeah. you have to worry about force of negation, but you've already seen one. True. And uh, this Just Guy version's got a lot more in common with a like tap out style control deck. Mm-hmm. Marty just going up the curve, casting Ring, casting Wrath of the Skies. Figured what's the worst that can happen, and the answer is this. As this is 7, 8, 9, 10 damage, and the Ring itself will kill Marty. So we have to do something. So this Solitude's coming after the Atraxa, mm-hmm. and Isaac will get to ephemerate it, but Isaac at least won't get to attack with it. Um, mm. And Marty's uh, Solitude will fizzle, so Isaac won't gain that life either. Okay, because I was I was wondering about the, the preemptive Solitude, because Isaac seemed to be representing an ephemerate pretty pretty mm-hmm. clearly there, so I thought he would Solitude it in response to the ephemerate, So but he was so worried about the, the seven life point swing right. 14 yeah. with a life gain yeah if we do it in the second main after combat we're just dead so so mm. marty forced to do it here before isaac even goes to combat all right and we'll see the attracts a resolution as isaac begins to create his piles and this is the second attracts resolution remember we mm-hmm. just ephemerate it so we have the initial etb and now uh and marty solituding there before isaac gets all these cards and possibly fights back in some way We'll see the three cards he grabbed from the first resolution. There will be four from the second. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Just lots of lots of cards to play with. Now he's still got some open mana, too. Gorio's Vengeance and Ephemerate combo is just three mana. Mm-hmm. And Isaac got to put this Atraxa in the hand. Mm. And, oh, no, we have nine cards. I guess we'll have to go to discard and pitch the Atraxa. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. We, we love it. It seems pretty strong. We've had Gorio's players uh, do well in the store in the past. The mm. the deck fell a little bit in popularity when MH3 came out because everyone wanted to play with the new toys. And like right. we said, Gorio's didn't really gain But the too frog many. is frog's the most popular toy outside of, you know, the one. Mm-hmm. Uh, and this deck utilizes the frog very, 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 very well. Flurry of spells here. Self thought sees to Greek Grizzlebrand to Gorio's the Grizzlebrand back and attack with Grizzlebrand Grief, putting Marty to one. Wow. Your own ring, it sure looks like. Wow. Okay, so Marty trying to <gasps> avoid. I hope I hope Marty goes to Marty's turn in response to ring trigger, activates ring to draw three, draws consigned to memory, and <laughs> counters the damage trigger. I think that's the only way he gets out of this. Nope. Just kidding. We're done. We're going away. There goes the cards and the permanents. All right, Isaac will win game one there. As we head into sideboards, we'll take a look at Marty's deck list. What's he working with? And that's that Gorio's deck just punishing the exact turn this deck tapped out and just pushed. Marty here playing this energy deck, cards on the board, a single flage in the sideboard as well. Narset Parter avails. These cards are getting so good, she got pushed to the sideboard <laughs> alongside three consigned to memory, Aether Gust, Celestial Purge, another Wrath of Skies, another Force, Two Mystical Disputes, one Supreme Verdict, and two Soul Guide Lantern. Soul Guide Lantern. Hit the button the lanterns. These cost one mana, attack a single card in the graveyard when you play it, and then can crack to deal with the rest of the graveyard, allowing you kind of just that pinpoint, just remove an Atraxa and have it sit around for later. Additionally, we are probably looking at this additional copy of Force of Negation, 
and Celestial Purge. Celestial Purge seems good. I was kind of, you know, consigned to memory technically works because it counters triggered abilities. Um, mm. But at the end of the day, Atraxa is still a 7-7, seven, seven, you know, flyer with life gain. But so. it can allow, if Marty wants, to bring in these consigns and this flage and do a little bit of their own scam where mm. you uh, okay. consign your sacrifice trigger so your consigns aren't dead really at any point in that game. What's hard is this Gorio's deck can grind, like we saw there, go deep into the game. But also, if Marty just like taps out to try to flage something, you're going to be staring down on Atraxa. So these two soul guides are incredibly important. Absolutely. And season a taste from there. Uh, yeah, so the, the automatic includes is the Graveyard Hate. Um, and then whatever, like you said, what Marty wants to do there, we'll yeah. head into game two with players finding starting sevens. It's so odd, right? Because you kind of want to grab a card, like say Narset, but Atrax is <laughs> not drawing cards, right? It you want to, you really want to uh, grab Narset? No, no, no. I'm saying it feels like it, right? Because your opponent takes so many cards and put them in their hand, mm. it feels like they're doing the unfair thing of drawing a bunch of cards. But in fact, they're putting a whole bunch of cards in their hand, not drawing, and it's not worth trying to just oops and snipe the Grizzlebrand instead of the Atraxa because mm -hmm. uh, your opponent's not going to fall for it. For sure. I don't think Isaac even really needed a lot of those extra cards. Just the base resolution of the, the main plan yeah. of his deck seemed pretty strong there. The thing is, is these energy-based control decks have moved away from things like Leyline Binding, mm. even though some uh, some folks are trying to figure out ways to make it work. Because big cards can be big problems, sometimes a Flage is just too big to answer with something, and Atraxa is far too big and powerful, the mana cost is too high, the power and toughness is too high for a deck trying to play Wrath of the Skies and Galvanic Discharge. Yeah, a lot of double pips out of this Jeskai deck are ready to yes. get to full domain with a Leyline Binding or to play a more expensive Leyline Binding, I feel like is pretty tricky. Yeah, it's um, hard when you have Manama, when you have Cascade Bluff, mm. when you have <laughs> Mystic Gate to really be like, and I also would like a Zagoth Triome, please. Mm -hmm. Marty will be on the play for game two here. He'll play Lango, and Isaac will oh, respond yeah. with a thought seize. Oh, it's a thought seize. So the thing about this Gorios deck is on top of having just a little splashing of counter magic, you also get these thought seizing effects. And looking at Marty's hand, light on mana, but high on interaction. Two spell snares, the Celestial Purge, Prismatic Ending, Wrath of the Skies, and Manamo, School of Water's Edge. This is a little bit of a tricky situation for Marty. This mana base isn't looking yep. too... Great, this Wrath of the Skies is just a single uh, potential white source. Yeah, that Wrath is so far away. And the Prismatic Ending isn't the most effective, depending on what Isaac's plan is. I imagine we're looking at Purge or one of these Snares, because we eventually need to try to push through Agorio's Vengeance. Mm -hmm. The the Purge being a removal spell for it, but the, snails, <laughs> the, smell, the spell <laughs> Snares, you can kind of play around a little until you're ready. And knowing them that they're there is half the battle of it. You're not just going to go into Marty's one mana stuff. And we've taken down one of the spell snares here with his Thought Seize. My general heuristic when looking uh, at a hand while Thought Seizing is to not go after the double, the double mm -hmm. in a hand. Um, but, but it's hard. Isaac disagrees. I mean, spell snare is not a yeah. bad choice. It's hard when the double is counter spell, right? It's like, mm -hmm. do I really want to slog through two counter spells? I'd rather, I guess, take one now and slog through one copy. But then Marty has the removal spell. Well, what's the in response to that? You can see kind of figuring out how that lines up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like I said, I don't think Isaac made a bad choice at no. all. But there's but there's a lot of good cards to take in that hand. It's like the there's the bolt the bird heuristic. There's mm -hmm. also the like thought of typically when thought season, you want to take the thing that is original, not a duplicate. Mm -hmm. But uh, magic cards are so powerful nowadays. Sometimes you just got to take what you got to take. Gotta do what you gotta do. We'll see the first flage oh. in Marty's hand there. I don't think he's getting <laughs> close to casting that. You mean with Island Manamo in play? Yeah, it seems a little rough there. Isaac uh, back on his turn will cast Tainted Indulgence. Excuse me, on the end step. Now, mind you, Marty needs to draw just a single red source to begin flaging. Mm -hmm. We just are very far away from flashbacking the flage. Right, Flasian will give Marty a little bit of life gain to deal with these huge uh, creatures swinging at him from Isaac's Ooh. side of the board. His turn, or his play for turn, will be Teferi Time Raveler. And uh, if you've played against Control any amount of times, you know that Teferi is such a difficult card for them to play mm -hmm. around and against. Sometimes a little bit in the main or you know a couple on the sideboard of this Gorios deck, but Isaac has found theirs. It's very important here. 
Marty will find his first red source in a tapped Thundering Falls. We'll pass it back after doing that. And milled the counterspell. Did not want mm -hmm. to draw it. Mm -hmm. Falashi Archaeologist will be the play. <laughs> Isaac going right through Jeez. resolution, knowing that Marty had a spell snare. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But in binning Atraxa, Atraxa. Oh, right, right, right. To Barry, excuse me. I'm sorry. He knows there. he can't in interact. Thank you. You got there, Holmes. Thank you, thank it's you. We, everyone has to fairy blindness, no matter how long you play magic. I'm used to just everyone pausing when they cast a spell, and yep. Isaac just so immediately went there that it kind of shook me. That's how you get got by your opponent's Odawara, though, is when you just like start shoving against a fairy, and you're like, you weren't ready. Mm -hmm. But uh, Isaac, off the back of this to fairy, being able to Gorios this attracts an unimpeded into play, and it's go time. It's go time, indeed. <laughs> Marty has all this open man. He can't do anything with it. Isaac's going to start picking pieces to fairy. You can grab this a planeswalker. Yes, that's another great thing about wow. bringing in these to fairies. Is again, it adds to your attracts and hits something you don't normally have. Mm -hmm. Grabbing four cards, it looks like. Psychic frog, land. To fairy. And I think we have an option of this fluster storm. Tainted. Gorios are tainted. Yep. Oh, taking grief instead of frog. And the players, I hear them are chuckling out there. Mm -hmm. about the choice of grief here and then if you're isaac and you're not sure what to grab just grab a card that pitches that grief easy piece a lot a lot, lot of decisions in the gorios deck i feel yes. like um i don't know if you've i know you've played the deck have you played it in a long event like an energy does yeah. it really wear on yes. you <laughs> absolutely <laughs> i remember when i got to round eight and i think it was like turn three of game one and my opponent just like Taps three mana, puts Nadu on the stack, and I'm like, we're good. It's done. The day's <laughs> over. It's all right, buddy. I don't need to be here anymore. Yeah, I think that's one of the biggest things for me when I decide on a deck for, for a large the event. The stamina of it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because I don't have good stamina for magic in general. I do find it's also easy to go to time with Gorios because you're taking so many game actions, mm. making so many decisions, and post-board delaying so many games that I find that the time dwindles away quickly, too. But it's very, very fun. Yeah, I, I would hope so. This is a game after all. Yes. If you're a fan of Rescam and Legacy like I am, this is like just playing very, very similar to that strat in Modern. I was going to bring it up at some point because I know Psychic Frog is a huge uh, yep. tool that that deck gained as well. It's It's got that similar plan of Frog being both enabler and a backup plan. Life points standing at 15 to 18 after a big swing from Isaac, a flage from Marty, cleaning up the Teferi, leaving just a mm. Falaji archaeologist on board. But the issue is, is there's just the Falaji on board, but there's the full grip of cards from Isaac. Mm -hmm. And Marty having to tap out, use something like this flage, very low on mana to try to fight back. And Isaac is in that decision making. And you may just start with trying to slam this Teferi. We talked about Marty immediately including the graveyard hate. We've only seen the other types of cards out of his sideboard currently. The 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 Wrath of the Skies, which he plays some main, some side. Yeah, um, the Celestial Purge as well. And we're still sitting on this purge, in. but Isaac Spell did snare. all of that while he's tapped out. Yeah, and the, the snare mm -hmm. ready for the next Gorios. But if we just slam Teferi first, then there's no snaring to be done. Right, yeah, you can't snare the Teferi itself. You kind of just... Yep. Yeah. You're feeling it where it's just like Isaac is applying little tiny squeezes here and there, adding mm. up to one very difficult squeeze. Going to bounce the Falaji back to hand and draw, which was a land. A bit of a flood here, but Atraxa sort of fixes all that. Will Isaac fetch up the breeding pool? Come to on, play Isaac. the Atraxa. Come on, Isaac. Because this is, we're already at five mana. We're not far nah. away. We're just getting the island. Nah, nah. We'll chill a bit. And like I'm, not, I don't know. I think we <laughs> might have been able to take a shock here to just uh, be is, set is up. Is Atraxa seven or eight? Seven. Okay. Okay. She's, okay. She gets played so much sooner than you think. Mm, I mean, yes, generally that is. <laughs> yes. But in this deck, right, it's just like because you're taking so many game actions, slowing your opponent down, mm. taking cards out of their hand. I have hard cast many in Atraxa because mm. you just take game actions. You slowly find lands off your early triggers. As the game goes on, you draw more cards, and then, oops, seven mana, here's my Atraxa. Isaac, thinking about replaying the archaeologist, will finally get that resolution underway. Falaji, Falaji, Frog. Can't grab no anything target. there, so we'll put a counter on it, pass it back to Marty. Still oh. sitting with a lot of cards in hands. Three to Marty's knowledge, and a few 
uh, still hidden. Spending our whole turn again to answer this to Fairy, but Marty is able to now hold up that spell snare. Mm-hmm. Be a shame if Isaac tries to grief it away. Yeah, used a prismatic. I need to clean up the Teferi. Staying at 15 life, despite all mm. the uh, domi dominant gameplay from <laughs> Isaac's side of the field. Yes. Flage, Flage helped a little bit with Marty's life total there. Hard cast grief will be the first play for Isaac's turn. And then Isaac already knows about the snare mm. and the pierce. Looks like Marty drew another snare. Oh, um, man. But we can take the purge now if we're starting to feel it. And Marty still only has a Wrath of the Skies for two. So that same situation of being so far away from stopping this grief. Mm -hmm. Isaac going to take the Celestial Purge with the grief. Still yep. has a white black open. And this kind of allows the grief to be the clock that Isaac can kind of rely on for the next couple of turns of this game. While Marty is still very far away from flashing back a flage. Oh, I'm sorry, escaping the escaping. wrong graveyard-based mechanic. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Land for turn will be Surveil from Isaac. See, if we would have got that breeding pool, oh attracts goodness. the online next turn. Oh, my goodness. And then the Ephemerate will come out. On the Grief. I would think so. And Isaac will take the Counterspell. The Counterspell leaving Marty with two Spell Snares and a Wrath of the Skies. Three cards that Isaac can play around for the rest of this game. Yo, what's up? Thank you for the subscription, friend. Appreciate your continued support. If any of you have a subscription available through Amazon Prime or through the money in your pocket, we would super appreciate you showing your support for the channel. That is how we keep this thing going with your viewership and your uh, generosity. We have flashed back and found yet another spell snare. Marty drawn four this game, counted four. Mm -hmm. One already a thought sees on the very first turn, but now just continuing <laughs> the trend of. Isaac's just not going to cast a true two drop for the rest of this game. Yeah, I think <laughs> Marty has three spell snares in hand. Yep. I don't think that's a situation that comes up too frequently. No, and I bet Isaac's going to attack with this flaji. Talk about uh, unfrequent events, and we're going to unearth our long, long time ago priest of fell rites. Mm -hmm. We brought that up in round one. We'll bring it up for me again because it's, it's it been has so long. It has unearthed, giving it haste. Tap, pay three life, reanimate, and here's Atraxa. You know, you say it, and then it just, like, truly goes out of my head no until problem. I read it. There we are. Yeah. Got it. Okay. The, the it gets back in Atraxa. And the unearth, when you unearth, gives the creature haste, allowing you to use this tap ability immediately. Mm. And uh, Marty's, everything's <laughs> gone away in response to the... You know, three spell snares in hand as Ooh. all you got to work with as an Atraxa enters play. Not even Gorio's not going anywhere. Really big match there for the leaderboard. Uh, this yes. Number three seed taking down the number two seed. Marty has been dominant in this entire uh, season of the Modern League. Isaac mm -hmm. uh, starting out a little bit later, but I think he's up to four. But when Isaac wants to play, nights. Isaac plays. Yeah, he he's a really, really strong competitor. I think we're going to see him finish at the very top of the leaderboard. Don't know exactly what position just yet. But we'll figure that out in just a couple of hours mm. uh, before we head into a break here as our backup match finished once more we're Perfect. trying to get you as much magic as possible but sometimes it doesn't always work out we're going to talk a little bit about nerd rage gaming dot dot com. Com. what a wonderful website for all of your tcg needs we sell magic pokemon digimon one piece and lorcana of course that main bread and butter is magic we have an event at the end of August, Madison Ooh, is Modern right. Team Trios and also something else that's being announced tomorrow, but you can see on Melee today if you're nosy. So you can prepare for all of those events by buying your cards and scheduling for event pickup on NerdRageGaming.com. Today, we also ship countrywide, and you can pick up in-store as well with our incredible loyalty rewards program. The more you spend, the more you save. With that being said, I'm going to let Dom check out his <laughs> phone real quick, and we'll be right back after a quick break. See you all soon. Bye.
Welcome back, folks, to Wednesday Night Modern here at the Nerd Rage Gaming Storefront. We got your number one seed, Jack Strepic, in the building in the feature match area against Andres Goblins, the Eldrazi Breach. Let's get it started. Oh, yeah. And we'll chat about this once Aviva gives these players the uh, AOK. -okay. There might be a little bit of a spice in Jack's deck today. If you uh, on today of all days, some spice on the last <laughs> night if, of the league when you're sitting in at first. I'm just saying. Uh, I think Jack was influenced by a an aspiring spike tweet that read, "Please be good. Please 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 be good." <laughs> oh, the arena of oh, am Are, I spoiling no, it? No, you're good. Go for arena it. Arena of glory and goblin guy. No, goblin, goblin instigator, I believe. It's the double strike one? That lets you do some sneaky goblin stuff. That one, yes. And Jack said he's already done it once today, and I believe he said he cheated in a Kiki Jiki. That's so, pretty neat. <laughs> Whoa. Andre's here. Uh, full reveal strategy. We're using this Devourer of Destiny to choose and put a card on top. Didn't have to reveal, but sure did put it through the breach on top. Warren and Skater, shout out to House. Big love. Thank you. As Andre's here plays Ayabugan, exiles that Devour, gets a Talisman of Impulse, and uses it to Ancient Stirrings. This Eldrazi Breach deck, every single time I play against it, just makes all of this mana on turn number one. Jack's looking at the single mountain like, uh-oh. <laughs> yeah, doing a lot more than Jack typically does in the first turn of a game. Yes. It's an Aether Vial. Sometimes it's a Goblin God. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this Eldrazi deck, because they get those pregame actions oh. and that... that um, <laughs> that two mana on turn one gets to do a lot more, and we've seen a lot of Eldrazi rise up in um, uh, playtime yes. because of MH3. Jack here using this Arena of Glory, but not activating its expendability, just using his untapped red source, playing Exert. conspicuous soup itself. Oh, yeah, what did I say? Oh, Expend. No. That's Bloomboro. <laughs> that is that's, Bloomboro. We're, we're throwing all sorts of keywords out. Yeah, shout out to me. I o 3 that pre-release. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> As Andres here uses his Kozlex command, the new K command, to take down the conspicuous Snoop. Mm -hmm. Building a little bit of a board there, though. Those guys don't stack up to the little guys that Jack has. <laughs> but these ones do add up to through the Breach Man to just shove your Emrakul or your uh, uh, Ulamog at your opponent. They do, and indeed. And that Devourer of Destiny sitting under that, uh, uh, under the Ugin's labyrinth. Labyrinth, yes. And not to mention if Andres exiles something even bigger to the Devourer trigger on turn one. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So a little more utility for Andres' little guys versus Jack's little guys. Typically, they just do some uh, pinging with like a sling game, for example. We'll see Jack mm. tutoring up a card here. Swan and he's brought to the front. Just very importantly, uh, Patch Lickmons. Thank you. The uh, uh, Goblin Blood Artist, basically. Mm -hmm. But what's very importantly is if Andres didn't use that K command on this conspicuous snoop, Jack would have just killed them this turn. Yeah, Jack explain had how that works. Jack had the turn two, turn three of this conspicuous snoop into Harbinger. Harbinger puts Kiki Jiki on top, and your non-summoning six snoop gains its abilities. It Kiki activates targeting itself, because it's not a legend, just has a legend's abilities. You make add infinite conspicuous snoops, use the last one to recopy the instigator, putting your sling gang on top and throwing them all at your opponent. And speaking of throwing at your opponent, <laughs> it is through the breach time for Andres. Whoa, it is, in fact, the Ulamog. There it is, the Defiler herself. We'll and get that up on screen for y'all. And Andres has an all his dust that was exiled before, so that is seven, Annihilator seven. on this. Uh, in this case, 14-14 Ulamog takes all of Jack's permanence and his life total with it. All Woo! right, quick game one <laughs> there. Andres will take down the number one spot on the leaderboard. Jack, he is playing for the lion's share of over $1,700 in store credit today. He has just been absolutely spectacular of with course. his goblins deck. I don't think we see anyone else. I, I mean, I don't no. play in our locals, but I don't think anyone else plays goblins. It's just uh, him, and he does it really, really well. I know of people putting it together, and I can't help but wonder how much our own goblin ringleader is slowly influencing other people. I think that's the highest form of flattery, right? Imitation, Absolutely. when someone plays against your deck and is like, wow, that's so cool. I yeah. want to play that. And you get that feeling as a magic player a lot when you like play a deck and they're like, wow, that was incredibly powerful. I think I want to do that. You're like, oh, I did this, even though the, the deck and its power did. But come on, part of that is you as well. Mm -hmm. I'm going to get uh, Jack's deck list pulled up here for anyone curious what he's playing today. We can see this little Gablano spice in action. But Jack has really taken to using sideboard space for just basically very, very 
pointed sideboard cards. I'm talking in the past, he's done like three ley line, three of the other ley line, three dampening spear, three surgical extraction. Like he is very, very specific and targeted and purposeful with his sideboarding. And I think we're going to see that again as we see four ley line of the void, four ley line of sanctity, two damping sphere, three chalice of the void, and two harsh mentor. Mm-hmm. And I saw he was doing some light sideboarding right there when we saw Jack reaching for the board. And it has to be these two damping spheres. We just have to be trying to shut down the double mana out of both Eldrazi Temples and the Ugin's Labyrinth because what happened there is Jack's opponent got so far ahead on mana that they were able to interact with Jack that if that excess mana wasn't there, Jack would have just combo rolled through that game. Exactly. I don't. I, I want to make sure we mention the fact that Jack almost killed him in that turn as well. Both of those mm-hmm. players had very fast game plans, and Andres had the answer to Jack's win con there. And the card we were talking, the little bit of spice, is this Warren Instigator. Mm-hmm. Uh, red, red, one, one, double strike. When it deals combat damage to an opponent, you may put a goblin from your hand onto the battlefield. This, alongside the Arena of Glory, allows Jack to really sneak in there, deal a lot <laughs> of damage, and specifically, like I said, he used it before to get the big five-minute Kiki-Jiki slammed into play. All right, we'll get back down to the action here. Boom. With the Jack on the play for game two. And Andreas, the only card I can see out of their hand so far is this Thought Not Seer and I believe a Carpalusian Forest sitting at the front of this hand. Not quite as powerful as the first hand he had. Yeah, those two aren't it, but there could be a lot more to make up the difference. And Devourer of Destiny sure does find the goods. Mm -hmm. Jack will grab his first starting seven, see an Aether Vial, Mm. bunch of lands, a lot of lands for a goblin deck. The Goblin starting hand. Munitions expert, we see that Warren Instigator, and the expert is an easy card to put to the bottom because some of Andres' creatures are going to be huge and mm-hmm. maybe not snipeable by the little goblin here. And swapping it out, putting this one to the bottom. Jack's ready to go. Cavern. Got to name vial. Goblin. You got to name it. Probably. I don't think. The Eldrazi Temple in the pass back. All right, this is Jack's chance to start to mm-hmm. develop a board state here, put some pressure on Andres before he can start pumping out those big fatties. Just First play of the game. Just going to hard the instigator. <laughs> Give this a look. Show off to uh, Andres there. I'll get it pulled up, even though we, we talked about the text of it already. Mm-hmm. Oh, I think that's the Eldrazi Temple art from the, the new Commander decks. I've not seen it yet. Yeah, that's the dual deck uh, art. Mm, I see, I see. And now I don't know. I think Bryce is able to get like different versions on here. I don't know how to do that, unfortunately. Oh, I get it. As uh, Jack slamming down a goblin matron, very, very cool. This is going to tutor a goblin into Jack's hand, so when he hits with the instigator, he can sneak in the one he tutors for. What's the best grab, then? You just grab like the most expensive goblin? Is there some sort of tech against uh, Eldrazi that probably, he has? Probably Kiki or the Sling Gang. Mm-hmm. Uh, like just you said, getting. just getting the most value out of it. Yeah. But it looks like we're picking a patch of like Mons here. Uh, what I call the Goblin Blood Artist. Mm-hmm. I'll get that pulled up as well. Take like a peek seed there. Whenever it or another goblin dies, when it takes one, you can sack a goblin to make two goblins. But it looks like we might be hitting here with the instigator. Uh, but it's the Kozilex command. Mm hmm. We'll exile this and make two guys, or maybe go with scrying. We're making two guys. Yeah, I think the that mana acceleration is just really necessary for the Eldrazi deck. Yeah, because Andres here may be, you know, drawing some of their Eldrazi cards, but you already have four mana alongside these Scions. Start casting cards like that Thought Not Seer, making your way up to maybe something like Worldbreaker, all on your way to try to through to breach the big old boys. Mm-hmm. Andre's taking a second to think about what he's going to do in the face of this munitions expert goblin matron, and the card he knows is in Jack's hand. The Carplusion Forest. This gives us that red source if we're ready to next turn try to push her through the breach. Remember, specifically through the breach, not an Eldrazi spell where the rest mostly are. So, not getting the full benefit from the temple when you're trying to push through the breach. Mm hmm. I'm just playing slowly but deliberately. I, I, sometimes people play slowly because they're nervous, but he seems just to want to make sure he's doing yep. everything in the right way here. Getting a Myco spawn, going to go tutoring for a land, putting it into play. And it's a forest. Mm-hmm. Easy peasy. Make your mana work. Make it good, make it function. It's the most uh, common 
uh, color that Eldrazi uses, right? Green? Yeah, just because of the ramp and this Myco spawn now giving you like a good card to use the green mana on, as mm -hmm. well as World Breaker, um, allowing you to then use the Talisman that splits green and red, so you can push that through the breach. Oh, right, yes, because you do need the red. Yeah, this is one of the like colored Eldrazi's and being an actual green-red base deck, needing both those colors out of the deck itself. Jack will play out the Sling Gang Lieutenant, get a couple of Gobbos onto the board. Andre's still sitting at 19 life. Oh, and the patch like in off the Aether Vial, so Jack's plan here is to push. Mm -hmm. No, he is playing out all of his spells. He's going to start using them to mm. get at Andre's life total. And with this Sling Gang, each will deal two, and Jack mm -hmm. will gain one because of patch like Mon and Sling Gang. So Jack right here looking to, I think, throw as much damage as we can, gain Ooh. some life, and hope to survive. Andre's looking at that single untapped forest. I'm trying to think what sort Dismember. of protection spell he might have. Green has some sort of, you know, like a veil, veil. Or like a snakeskin veil, or I don't know. He's not playing that, but... Mm. It is Oh, dismember. that's not the right card. Yeah, it dismember. is Dismember. But I think Jack can just sure activate can. it all in response anyway. But he won't have that sling game for next turn when he presumably makes some more goblins. He's going to use some of them to clean up the mana. Smart. Just I limiting agree. it makes it harder to cast the big stuff. Anders also takes additional damage from this Dismember cast because of the Phyrexian mana, which will work in Jack's favor. He's going to start taking up in life total from that Pashalik Mons. Like you said, we'll get full life totals. Look like they're going to settle at 19 to 12 in Jack's favor. Leaving Jack with a little bit of a board, but not expending all of it. Mm -hmm. And taking out some of Andre's mana ramp as well from that. Spawn or Scion? I can never remember. The Sewing Myco Spawn. No, no, the token. Oh, oh my gosh. I think those are spawns, the <laughs> ones. I believe Scions are one ones. Thank you, thank you. If, I don't if know. If we're wrong, chat will yeah. tell us. I knew I brought the wrong ones to play <laughs> uh, Malevolent Rumble for a while, but mm -hmm. I just Sharpie to zero. There you go, yeah. Quick fix. No sharpening cards has been real popular on Magic Twitter recently. Sure has. <laughs> memes the meme, you know what I'm saying? They memes that do be memeing. Back on Andre's turn here, he'll play out a Cavern of Souls. Go down to ten from the Carplusion. Through the breach we go. And, and that's, uh, that's yeah. good enough. Oh man. Jack tried to push as hard as you can, but the one thing that's very hard for the goblins has to be all your permanents disappearing. Mm -hmm. It's hard for any of us, so don't you worry, Jack. Absolutely, yeah. Goblins has a lot of guys, but they're little guys, and Emmercool... Just eats them all. She she do be doing that. So our number one seed will fall to Andre still uh, has a chance to make up some points in the last of round of the day. We'll head into our backup match and see what they're doing there. There's a storm of ruin. There is a storm of ruin. We got Jared, who's sitting at... Oh, excuse me, I don't have it ready. He is sitting at number seven on our leaderboard versus Brian, who's sitting at 15, trying to get into top eight here. See if they're in their first game still. Hold on. Yep, we're going to take a quick check. On the left side, we got Demir Frog, kind of your classic new iteration of using the power of the frog alongside Blue Counter Spell and the Black Interaction. And then on our right side, we have Brian Tepper playing a Ruby Storm. It looks like we're in the middle of trying to figure out a Storm turn. And do we get confirmation of game one for them? It is. Oh, strap in, folks. Excuse the uh, technical difficulties as well. Oh, the flickering Jared? <laughs> yeah, don't worry about it. We'll see if we can get it lined up where Jared uh, changes faces each time, too. Oh, gosh. Uh, Brian here looks like we've got a couple Eldrazi spawns. Science? Who knows? And a Goblin Archimancer, and we are currently casting the spell Wish. I think I'm going to just turn that off. But it's a little distracting it, there. The Force of Negation. And very importantly, part of Force exiling the spell being cast, which is important for the fact that Pass in Flames is a part of the overall Storm strategy. Mm -hmm. And Brian quickly untapping there. I think Jared may have just drawn a card and passed turn right back, and then looks like Brian looks to be doing the same, passing the turn back. Not too much on the board for either of our players right now. I know Storm can kind of pop off out of nowhere. Dimmer Frog is probably a little bit of a slower build. Yeah, and I think it seems like Brian maybe has tried to Storm a couple of times now. Mm -hmm. 
you have a big big old graveyard out of out of view here. Let me see. Yeah, our our players here playing the modern format for those unaware about 2004 forward getting to 20 plus years of Magic the Gathering. A very fun time to watch here is Jared slams an MH2 staple in this Merktide region, coming in as big old 8-8. And Brian utilizing some important cards and reprints from MH3 to create this Ruby Storm strategy. Yeah, welcome first time chatter. We'd love to have you in stream. I would say this is probably a little bit advanced for you. Uh, a new set just came out in Bloomboro, and if you want to check out some drafts or standard, that would probably be a little more beginner friendly. But it's always good to just absorb, absorb more magic. Yes. And just soak it all in. You're you're looking at 30 years of history and card gaming right now. So there's a lot to take in. Don't you don't want to get uh, overwhelmed though. So right, take a break course. whenever whenever you want. This is this is a game oh. after all. We're we're here to have fun. Nothing makes it more clear this is game number one as Jared plays the Harbinger of the Seas into Brian's purely basically <laughs> mono red deck. Essentially, yeah, a lot of basic mountains there. Not going to do too much. Turns off a little bit of the green mana he has. Yep, but we've already put the Anarchomancer into play, so yeah, not too not, worried about not it. Not too, too many other green spells you're going to be casting there. I'm not going to count Mana Morphos in that. What's fun is that we got a peek at Jared's hand real quick, and I believe we saw that he has a spell Pierce. Mm, okay. That it'll be fun to see if Brian tries to go for it, if there's anything worth playing around. This Murktide is just so big that on Jared's turn, Jared's going to attack and take this game down. So we're still going to be able to see a full, 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 full game number two out of these players. So you can just see how fast this Storm deck can be. Yes, I'm going to try and find a deck list that we can look at during sideboarding here real quick. I don't know if either of these players submitted for today. I'll take yeah. a quick peek. Oh, yeah. Brian did. Okay, Perfect. I'll pull it up yeah. for y'all. And uh, shout out to our... <laughs> nope. Uh, and shout out to our folks in chat. Jared here playing uh, Demir, slang term for the blue and black color combination together. As someone said, their deck ready to try to kind of say no a couple of times and push with one threat a few times. Where Brian is playing, well, the deck is called Ruby Storm. Putting the card Ruby Medallion that says your red cards cost one less. And then trying to cast as many red spells in one turn as you possibly can. The name Storm coming from just that. This is Ruby Storm Goblins that we're taking a quick peek at here. Mm -hmm. This is Brian's full 76 that he is working with. You see that 60 for this is card. Jack's deck, right? Oh, excuse me. Did it not? Oh, goodness. I just changed. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. We got this, folks. Blink. Oh. Blink a couple wow. of times. It'll become Ruby Storm. Give me just a second here. I don't think I actually hit copy. <laughs> All is well. There we go. There we go. Here it comes. Like I said, the, com the name Ruby Storm comes from the Ruby Medallion. I mean, the cards cost one less, and trying to cast just as many of them as you possibly can. Oh, he's got a companion. Hold on, hold on. There's a Gigantha. There's it's a, a Gigantha. It's a Kihira. What? It's Kihira. What? Is, it, is that not right? I don't know. This is fun. Uh, <laughs> We're figuring it out on the fly. Thank you for your patience, folks. I usually do not produce. It's 100% so. not Kihira. There we go. But this is Jeskai Energy. Okay. It's not Kihira. Not, Ru not Ruby Storm. Oh, this is not his deck. He <laughs> submitted this today, bro. Uh, David's playing this deck today. I'm so sorry, oh, folks at home. Oh, my goodness. This is some folks Pepper when they, submitted. When they do some swoopsie whoopsies <laughs> out there, we end up looking at cool decks like this. Very cool. If you want to check out the Tharag, uh, someone's out there playing. Okay, uh, well. It's Helga is her name, but we'll just take a peek at is the Is someone players. actually playing Bloomborough cards out there? Yeah, but they're not doing very well. Oh. <laughs> Big shout out to Wolf Spider. We loved him. Bezo Bucks subscribed with pride. Thank you so much for your support. That's how we know we're doing a good job. If you want to hit that follow button too, we're live every Wednesday at 6.30 with Magic, live every Thursday at 6.30 with Pokemon. Check them out tomorrow. We're going to head on back down, look at our players shuffling up. Uh, cool decks aside, don't look at this. Look at this. There you go. We got some good old action heading to you in just a second here. Jared will be on the play for game two. Excuse me, Brian will be on the Brian play. Brian will be, Brian will be. Brian, yes. Brian got smacked around by a Merc Tide, so he gets to mm -hmm. go first. And by the fact that we saw an entire match on our main feature and the time it took these players to play game number one mm -hmm. means Jared fought back probably a couple of times against Brian trying to go for it. And now here we are shuffling up, prepping for that game number two. Brian <laughs> leaned back. Uh, this is a deck that can... 
ever so slightly, win mm-hmm. his earliest turn number two. And on the play, Jared won't have the time to hold up Counterspell. Let's get that winner pip on there. Here we go. Here winner we go. Winner pip. Get, get, get a little peek of Jared in between the uh, camera outages yeah, here. A little Jared flicker. Got to give him some credit. Got to give him his camera time as much flicker. as we can. He's sitting at that seven spot. Going to probably take home some store credit at the end of the day here Cha-ching. after I do some quick maths. Cha-ching. Brian, a pretty good player himself, sitting a little bit lower on that leaderboard. He had to go and have a baby and be a busy boy. <laughs> it, I hate when real life gets in the way of my cardboard my magic. gaming. No. Ugh. All right. Come on, my magic. <laughs> As I s- we see Jared here drawing counterspell right there in the front, that if Brian does try to go for it ASAP, Jared might not even have the time for. Mm-hmm. Push, Brian. Well, both players will keep here, Brian. He's got some of those accelerators, yep. some of those discounters as well. So I was talking with Brian before, and this Storm deck is, I think, one of the few decks that its turn one is basically scripted 99.9% of the time in this format. Mm. The deck does not have turn one plays, which means Fetch for Commercial District is almost exactly the turn one every single game for this deck. And we know you we and we know that you love a turn one surveil. Love a surveil. Love a surveil. <laughs> it's basically a spell. It's basically a time walk, depending who you ask. Oh, goodness. That is that is high praise. Well, now Brian doesn't have the turn of drawing past in flames, and instead he gets to draw this card on this turn. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of like we skipped that whole turn that would have happened. That is a way of thinking about it's it. It's a way. <laughs> <laughs> and Brian, we have, it looks like, uh, Reducer and Ritual. I think it tells you the speed of this deck that he's already tanking on turn two. Yes. Well, he knows he's playing against a counterspell deck as well mm-hmm. as like cards like Spell Pierce, debating on the going for it play versus the setting up and drawing cards play. And it will be the Spell Snare. He didn't even let that card leave his hand. He was like, is this going to resolve? <laughs> Probably not. And Jared will not let it. Brian so there goes typically, the Rupert Medallion. Brian, typically the counterspell player themselves. Mm-hmm. Uh, a part of the borrowing deck circle that happened out there before everyone got started. <laughs> Wanted to try out Ruby Storm. Brian's kind of getting the cards together himself. Finds himself at 2-0, but trying to figure out how to fight through this pile of counterspells. Mm-hmm. If it goes well, maybe he'll pick up some of those cards at nerdragegaming.com. Ooh, you should use do the, that too, gamer. Use the wish list feature if cards you want aren't currently available. Yo, I listed so many cards today. You'll get emails all day while at work, just <laughs> like I do. <laughs> I'll list more tomorrow. Great. This is good news. It's, it's a wonderful cycle. I enjoy it. Yeah. I enjoy it as well. I spend the <laughs> you dollars. enjoy buying the cards I list. <laughs> yep. Someone's got to play them, right? <laughs> oh, I know, I know, yeah. Jared counterspells the Redden's Resolve, and you can see this might be what happened in game number one of Brian just trying to get his feet under him and Jared saying no over and over and over. It's kind of what the deck is made to do. Yeah, it is kind of what the deck is made to do. Uh, and Storm has to string together a lot of stuff, right? Sure you does. can't. You can't just play, you know, Emmer cool and then win. No, it's trying <laughs> to do as many things as possible. Exactly. So you just put a little bit of a hurdle in the way, and that's generally enough. Jared will finally get some th- a permanent onto the field in Psychic Frog. And we'll be back on Tepper's turn here. And now Jared doesn't have to take any game actions besides saying no for the rest of the game. This frog will probably do all the work. Indeed. It's probably going to turn sideways a couple of times. Pepper again, trying to find which line is the best. There's so many different spells you can start with. He'll begin with Manamorphose. And mm. just just look right at Jared. Just be like, <laughs> D- do I get it? Well, this one? Mm. Mm. Mm, How about maybe. now? That will resolve, and then he'll Rale. try a Ral Monsoon Mage. Jared will go for his hand here. He seems to have a response. That subtlety will come out, and he will have to pick which card to <laughs> pitch. And it'll be a Murktide Regent. Doing what you got to do. This frog will do its Murktide impression anyways. Indeed, yeah. I heard the card, the two cards compared to each other. And one fuels the other, which is very fun, too. Uh, yes. Mm-hmm. Jared's going to need the draws off this frog because we're starting to run out of cards to interact with Brian. Yeah, those, those uh, evoke spells bring it down in card advantage a little bit. But a blue-black deck has got to be able to draw <laughs> some cards if there's a deck at all. Yeah, thankfully the frog will slowly but surely get you one card at a time. Try to get your way there. Back on Tepper's turn now. Tr- try for a third time to get things <laughs> going here. Another rail. Another Quick counter, counter spell. spell. Oof, oof. Use the Kay. frog. Jared's getting there, running out. 
Drew a preordain for turn, which is not a bad card. Not a bad card. Not a bad card. Tepper. I think he's still got some juice left. I don't think he's out for the count yet. I don't think this matchup's great for him, though. No. Really struggling to put stuff together here, like you said. Froggle swinging for one. Second main will play that preordain C2 counter spells. Put them both on top and draw the the uh I think not the, free one. Yeah, I wonder Jared's kind of reaching the point where you might need to free feed this frog just a little to try to just like actually finish the game in a timely manner. I was gonna say one point of damage at a time is not a pretty enough. slow clock. Brian's yeah. sitting at seventeen to Jared's fourteen. Like, Jared is this consider in hand might be worth feeding to the frog. First spell for Tepper will be a ritual, and it'll get counterspelled, mm. and he'll just pass it back every turn. Just try again. Try I again. He'll have, he has to run out at some point, right? I guess. Right? <laughs> or, or Tepper will. We'll see. Get him for one. Here comes the frog. Yeah. No. I would have fed that the frog. Feed these frogs. Another frog. Let them eat. Double the clock. There's yep. no other way to buff these frogs. Not no other way. There's mm -mm. no way to make them big frogs. The best buff is to play another one. It draws it draws on combat damage, right? Sure does. Yeah. So now these two will, they'll be eating good. Maybe. I don't know. Jared hasn't been uh giving them too much <laughs> well, to nibble on. Jared yet. drew a fatal push, so at least mm. feed them that. <laughs> let him let him eat a little. A fatal push can kill a Ral. Yeah, but we already dealt with two of them. <laughs> That's very fair. Mm. Brian up to four lands. We'll start with another ritual. I Fatal think... push doesn't do anything. Has think... three mana for a force. I think Brian is trying to storm out the grape shot in his hand to try to kill these frogs. Oh, goodness. All right. I think, oh, this is... Storm uh... count one. He's had, I think, his first resolved spell of the yeah. game besides that metamorphose right. earlier. I think we might actually be going for the wish. You can see uh, you can see Brian going through some cards. Those cards were, in fact, his sideboard. And the, the wish will get forced. Yeah, the yeah. wish will get forced after a quick fetch. I like the I like the basics. Uh, Jared's playing. Did you peep those? The Assassin's Creed Merfolk ones. Yeah, the second best Assassin's Creed islands. Wow. Okay, that's what everyone keeps telling me. And the first one's I'm... a pirate ship, the most beautifully rendered pirate ship in Magic. Yeah, but the other one is like a Poseidon. It's Poseidon. It's, yeah, it's pretty great. I know. I'm very biased, clearly. But me, me and you, Jared, we we got each other. I'm biased currently to the <laughs> Bloomboro Spring Island with the sun rising over the lily pads. Oh my god! Oh, that's so specific. It's gr it's great. Uh, the Bloomboro basics for those that don't know have uh seasons. each each of the seasons. So each basic has four versions, and the winter ones are rarer. The winter ones are ten percent. Yeah. Uh. So those that's a neat little fact for you there. The autumnal ones are a little rare, and, and the, the spring, spring and, and summer, summer are pretty common. The least rare, right? Oh, that's a break. What breaking Surgical news card? Okay, thank you. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> you can see because it is the uh, beaten dead horse coming back to life. Ah, uh, for sure. The, the right. flavor text about beating the dead horse one and, too many and times. Brian's tired of getting beaten by this dimmer deck, and he will scoop it up. And our seven seed will move to three and zero oh on the night. We'll see if he can crack into top four and get even more of that good old prize money. Cha ching. Perhaps we'll see him back in our final round of the night. We'll see how pairings shake up. We'll be right back before we go. Let's see if we have. Yeah, we do. There it is. Ching, ching. In Madison, August 24th and 25th. Hang out with us at the NRG series for some good old modern and team trios. Standard, modern, and legacy. You and two friends can play in, in our Sunday event or our Saturday event and if you get first, you automatically qualify for our championship event. 24 players, $35,000, and an invite to the Pro Tour. That sounds pretty good to you. What about a custom token? There it is. From our very own Inkling Customs, of course, I will be picking mine out on Sunday. I'm very excited to do so. But if you have something to say about that, head on over to Madison, August 24th and 5th. We'll be right back after a quick break. See you all soon. Bye. <laughs> Welcome 
Welcome back to round four, our very last match of our 12-week modern league. The stakes have never been higher. We have your undefeateds of the night, Jared and Isaac. Seats three and seven, respectively, on our leaderboard. We'll see how this shakes up. Jared on the play will begin us off. Dark Slick Shores. And toss it back to Isaac Van Til. Oh, yeah. It's go time. Pitch a grief to play a grief. We'll take a look at this hand. This is some of what Isaac saw last time he was on camera. Some spell snares, a counter spell. And a harbinger of the sea. A little less relevant. Well, A little more relevant, Very maybe? super relevant against the, the mana base of this deck. What Isaac's going to get to do is be able to take the counter spell, take a spell snare. Mm. Then when this ephemerates back, take the harbinger or the spell snare, depending on how Isaac feels about his mana. Yeah, with the ephemerate, you can actually take two cards here. So, And then the third the on doubles. your upkeep. A third on the upkeep. It's a lot of cards. It seems almost too strong. <laughs> right, but you see it's important to take this counter spell first because Jared on Jared's turn here gets to go up to two mana and could have counter spell for the uh, rebound at ephemerate, but this way instead Isaac gets all the cards. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's why mulliganing is so rough. Uh, because, especially in the blind here, I, I assume Jared uh, knows what Isaac is on, as as does oh, Isaac yeah. uh, know what Jared is on. <laughs> Isaac knows what Isaac's playing, 100%. <laughs> and now Thoughtseize just to take the the, the remaining Harbinger. Mm -hmm. Leaves Jared with a single card in hand. He'll draw for turn. Because Isaac did the thing again, keeping the one lander in the powerful Grief Scam play. Yeah, it worked pretty well the first time. Try it again now. Well, the first time Isaac kept this one lander was the game he lost, but this fueled Jared's Merktide and big old Merktide's here to play. All right, Jared will battle back here. He's got a big flyer. Isaac probably has some of his own, but a Solitude will clean it up before Isaac's hit the field. We'll change life totals here up to 20 again for Jared to Isaac's 15. And this little grief that could is going to try to see how far it can go. Oh. <laughs> Top deck mode for Jared will play a land and oh, pass. Continue. Isaac. Isaac Continue to beats. Oh, that's pretty good. Oh, my goodness. What are these life totals? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, is this actually the life totals? Yeah. Okay. We got <laughs> some fetch shock action going alongside <laughs> taking the damage from this combat. Having a good time out there. We're playing modern, baby. Couldn't help but notice a certain something missing all day, all night, all tournament. But that is A-OK -okay as these players are having a good time even after a grief ephemerate on tournament. Dude, they cannot figure out this life counter. <laughs> oh, my goodness. All right. Zero it is. Okay. 17? Okay. What is happening? Sure. I'll take your word for it. <laughs> it was at eight a second ago, but okay. There. Oh my God. Please, please lose a point of damage. Thank you. We just fetched. We were at 16. Oh my goodness. Whoa. Subtlety coming in for some damage. Down to nine for Isaac. He's taking a lot of damage off of various uh, effects from his own deck. He'll play a Psychic Frog. We might see some. Ooh. That doesn't kill the frog. Oh my goodness. Bowmaster. Bowmaster from Jared. Bow. Haven't seen that guy in a long time. Just so not good. Yo, what's that? <laughs> a Yu-Gi-Oh card, I guess. Get that baby size card out of here. What is that? Oh, that's the Orc Army token. It Yeah. <laughs> okay, bud. Sure, sure is. That works. Wow, it looks so beautiful next to this <laughs> island, right, have you? <laughs> <laughs> Back on Isaac's turn here. He's In been able to find a few more lands now, has a bit more to play with. Might actually see some of the uh namesake cards come out here for him. The Bowmaster will trigger off the uh, draw card effect from the frog dealing combat damage. Mm -hmm. So we'll see how incentivized Isaac feels to actually rumble into combat with that frog. Surveil away a Falaji archaeologist. Yeah, we're not looking draw for that for one. Draw for turn will be an ephemerate. Hand looks to be another <laughs> frog and an ephemerate. I think a solitude. Grief continues to swing in. He did not swing with, not the, with frog. the frog. Doesn't want that Bowmaster to get any damage or make this Orc Army any bigger when he's sitting at seven oh, yeah. life. Oh, talk to me about the draw step ephemerate on Grief. Oh, yeah. Oh, boy. Eats the counter spell instead. A lot of lands from Jared. Draw's oh. not as good as last round. Sorry. Uh, Yep. 
then the last last card is that lone force we've known for a while but jerry drawing a lot of lands here actually has the mana to cast it if need be mm -hmm. kind of hard to have a counter spell that your opponent's fully aware of though we'll swing mm -hmm. in with the grief again with menace he does have three blockers see we got to deal with it at some point you can't just let him keep swinging yeah you can kind of see that same process happening here of oh do i don't I? oh he's reaching okay life total seven all and we'll fetch down to six. Okay. We just have to be careful because we are entering the the phase of the game that Isaac can jump these frogs, feed the unblocked one, and push for a lot of damage. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because Isaac will draw up to a fourth card next turn. We can make a five-powered frog next turn if we really want. And we know the card in Jared's hand, so it's just about beating the unknown. Big draws here. Nope, it's a Brutane. That's a good start. Sees Force Bottom. and Island. Bottoms, bottoms them. Rip. I couldn't see that. One. Oh, it's another Force. My okay. goodness. Wow. He's seen all four Forces, I think. Oh, well. Isaac drew Gorios. But Jared. that's not the important part here. It's this the Rumble. <laughs> All right, Jared looks at his, his two counter spells. Is going to block. Oh, block the grief? Oh, okay. Yeah, I was like, you have to block double, a frog double or you block, die. Double block the grief. We'll block the frog with the subtlety. Four damage. Isaac is going to take a moment here. Figure out which of his cards he likes the least. Mm. Got to gotta shorten this clock. We're going to discard the Indulgence and the Gorios to have the frog eat the subtlety. Love that choice. All right, damage has resolved. Isaac will have two frogs. Jared will have nothing. He's going to need a lot to get out of this one. Tainted indulgence. Draw two mode? Force no. Force negation? Been forced. You got it. You got to just uh get rid of the cards in Jared's hand. What's this? Ooh. Memory Oh, it's, this, it's the fancy one. Oh, no, I'm sorry. That's the fancy Archmage's charm. Oh. Yeah, with Teferi. Deluge has a has a game day promo like that too. It sure does. I totally believed you. <laughs> I found I a fatal like, push, things? cleans up one of the frogs. Down to five. Yeah. That frog swings in immediately. One point of damage. Draw for Isaac. Chip in a chair for Jared. <laughs> Oh, oh my goodness, he cannot stop drawing lands. And oh, just he's those to the frog. And yeah, he Jared, sees three Jared's cards in Isaac's hand, and that's enough to bring him down to zero. Yeah, Isaac was still trying to figure out how to best like pace and figure that game out, and Jared had already decided that Jared was done, and we're heading on, on to game number two. We'll take, take a, a look peek. at the dimmer frog deck list since we've seen Gorgas a few times here. Frog. This is an example decklist we found off of MTG Goldfish. Might not be exactly what Jared's running, but should give you a good framework for what he's working with. Okay, just shout out to whoever you took this decklist from. Yeah. Bottom left card, Drag the Canal, a card I have a big obsession with, and I just liked it at seeing some amount of play. Sideboard cards here is Harbinger of the Sea, Cling to Dusk, Consigned to Memory, Stern Scolding, Break the Ice, Toxic Deluge, and Nile Spellbomb. Same deal as we saw last time playing against this Gorio's deck. We have two artifacts on the sideboard here in these Nile Spell Bombs that help us deal with the graveyard. And this time we have a Cling to Dust, a spell that can also help us try to attack that graveyard. Outside of those three cards there, is there ways to try to like figure out how to fight back that menace there? You technically can try your Stern Scoldings mm -hmm. because now with the reemergence of Frog into Gorio's deck, you actually have 12 targets in the four griefs of four frogs and the four phalages. So depending on how desperate you feel, how important those 12 cards are, you could see reaching for a card like Stern Scolding. Maybe may I recommend over a card like a three-mana Archmage's Charm. Yeah. <laughs> I know people have some really strong opinions about Archmage Charm. I'm a big fan of it, but it does seem a little clunky in this battle of spells uh, uh, that uh, Jared is trying to win. As Raja uh, 
good friend of the channel, good friend of the series, uh, calls a lot of those cards, the Cancel Plus. Cancel right? Plus, yeah. Uh, Archmage has got a big Cancel Plus energy. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. Uh, I would say so. I think, oh, goodness. It's like cancel might just be better in some situations. Uh -oh. <laughs> my my favorite my favorite trope is cancel with set mechanic. Oh yes, and we've seen the Gorizek like, a couple of times, but we can throw it deal. back up there again. I got you, I got you. A little bit of scan package, a little bit of thoughtseize package. Cyborgs here to very important here, like it was in the control matchup. This deck still has a controlling slant to it. And Teferi is a great answer to a Merc Tide. Make him pick it up, spend that mana all over again. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, additionally. We might see move towards bringing in this last copy of Prismatic Ending, depending on how worried we are about uh, the frogs from the frog deck. Sometimes that classic, if uh, the deck's named after a card, want to give it a little bit of respect. Mm -hmm. Same thing, we have this Force of Negation, brought this in against Control, very likely to come in here as well. And depending just how froggy you're feeling, <laughs> you could bring in these Leyline of the Voids against your opponent who's trying to Merc Tide you. But to maybe not. Maybe not. I don't know. The deck list that I grabbed was called Dimmer Merktide. I did ask you uh, <laughs> it before stream what I should call this, and there are four frogs, four frogs. and three Merktides. So well. it's it's sort of to flavor what you call the deck. They're they're pretty <laughs> synergistic with each other. So I don't think it. I mean, a deck name doesn't really matter, right. but it well, does an give you some insight. <laughs> yeah, right. We are in the MH three format currently. Although this Gorios deck might have something to say, but it has had something to say yep. about that. It's got the Frogs and the Wrath of the Skies, two big improvements for this deck. But Atraxa is a heck of a card still. Yes, she is. And she's still in standard. Yes, she is. Can you believe that? Oh, I can. Um, I, I, I have to put a new... I, like, <laughs> ten cards in my sideboard rotated and a, a bunch of the ones that deal with uh, Atraxa. So we'll, uh, we'll, we'll talk about that another day, though. <laughs> Back to modern formats. All right, modern. Got a lot of shuffling to do, as is classic <laughs> in, a, in a modern game. And some fetching, some considering. Yeah, we're doing a little bit of draw going, a lot of surveil happening here right now. Mm -hmm. This is definitely uh, one of the slower matchups that we're going to see tonight. you got to build up your resources. You don't want to overextend. Make sure that you, are, you have your resources ready for your opponent. A lot of reactive gameplay over proactive. Yes, both of these decks have a reactive slant. Just Gorio's quick uh, shift to doing one big proactive thing is what allows us to get that power, right? <laughs> of just being like 56 cards that are reactive and four Atraxa really lets you just push. Yes, that's definitely the word I think of when I see Atraxa is proactive. She's the proactive portion. <laughs> definitely no. got to deal with her when she hits the field. Not a lot of folks playing paying full retail for that one. No, not at all. We'll see this breaking new surgical extraction hit. No, Thoughtseize this time? No, that's the Surgical. That is the Surgical. Oh, uh, you get taking, to see the hand, though. Yeah, yeah tracks yeah. it from the graveyard and from the hand. Thoughtseize is also in breaking news, by the way. So It is, indeed. <laughs> and uh, the old school style of this Surgical, Isaac doesn't even get cards back in hand. We just get to rip those Atraxas right mm -hmm. out. There's, there's a good number of Surgical effects nowadays. The newer ones are kinder to people and cost more mana. But mm -hmm. Surgical is not kind and is not expensive. Indeed, indeed. We got like Stone Brain is a real popular That's one these one. days. Let's them at least draw if you take it from their hand. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, Necromentia, let them at least get a zombie for their troubles. Sure, sure. But this one just rips them all right out. Chat, you got any more for us? Falaji will be the play for Isaac. Oh, but it yeah. will get countered. It's got to use those spell snares on something yes. while you got the mana up. And if I had my wish, <laughs> it would be Jared surgically in these Atraxas here on turn number two. Yeah. And dying to Grizzlebrand like six <laughs> turns from. That's the thing with Gorios, right? Is that they they win in, in different mm. ways. So even a surgical, which can rip the best card out of your deck, yep. you still have different ways. He could just win with the Psychic Frog. Yep, Frog griefs. Jared here even trying to use Harbinger of the Seas, but Isaac Check had on the mana. Yeah, Isaac had this uncracked fetch, at least allowing access to find this swamp. Mm -hmm. No white mana anymore, so you can't ephemerate. Do not, can't do any of those scam effects. But we can frog, we can evoke this grief, we can even play this floggy. The second one will resolve, oh, no. tapped out Jared. Lose our frog to the mill, grab the uncastle prismatic ending. Play the frog. And did you see the secret card in Isaac's hand? I didn't. It's the planes. It's the planes! Whoa, <laughs> whoa, 
What a rip. <laughs> oh, Isaac. <laughs> oh, man, what's it like? This is how you win. <laughs> Apparently. Like I said, he uh, Jared ripped Atraxas out of Isaac's deck. Could just win with this little flying frog. Doesn't fly yet, but it can. It's about to. Munch, munch, munch. Here you go. You're going to see Isaac pitch this prismatic ending, that's for sure. It is unplayable. Does he value his mana? He could just prismatic ending the Harbinger at some point. We can't. Oh, well, he's if you get the, the white mana, you right. Yeah, he's got the planes in hand. Isaac is fooling all of us. <laughs> he's really holding that planes. I mean, it's, it's a really good uh, card to keep private until you need to use it. Um, the fact that Jared thinks he's off completely of white mana right now is uh, a really good bit of information. Swinging again with the frog. Tick down to 13 for Jared. Planes reveal. Planes reveal. <laughs> wee -woo, wee -woo. And passes the turn back, so not using the pending. No, that's sorcery speed. Jared didn't draw a land. Lots of land. Or not even land go. Just draw go right. for Jared. Discard a land. Pump up the frog. Put it on. Keep it on the ground going to get blocked by the Harbinger. Yeah, Isaac realizing that Jared is incentivized to make those blocks, so it's not worth eating the cards right now for Isaac mm -hmm. when they can win this combat. And now, mana unlocked. It's griefing time. Just a full four mana for Stern that. scolding, yelling them. Mm -hmm. You only got two toughness, bud. You only got two toughness, bud. Get in the grave. How about another one in a minute? Jared's yeah. got some stuff to do first. Jared here casting this frog into the known prismatic ending because Jared now just needs to kind of grind through the cards that Isaac has in hand. Mm -hmm. There is a lot of overlap to these two decks. They have, I would say, different plans, but sometimes they uh, arrive at um, mm -hmm. the same conclusion. The Demir deck is kind of the Goryeo's deck's backup plan. <laughs> Like, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I agree with that. But the thing is, the Demir deck here has Murktide to go along with it, and Isaac's mm -hmm. had their big threat stripped from them. I was going to say, they actually have very similar plans, because sure Murktide do. is the top end, and then Atrax is the other top end. I kind of feel like this Demir Frog deck is pretty good, but Goryeo's is its bigger, cooler brother. <laughs> For sure. For sure. But I know this Demir deck is like pretty targeted to try to kind of attack what's going on in the format right now. Mm -hmm. But if they can do it, that means Gorios can do it too. The Psychic Frog will indeed eat that prismatic ending from Isaac. Frog will go sideways, bringing Jared down to 11. Drew another frog. I just had the thought that it might have been worthwhile for Isaac, as his grief gets stern scolding, to prismatic ending for three, targeting the frog so that it couldn't be spell snared. Oh, you could just overpay could for overpay. it. Overpay. Mm -hmm. But uh, hmm. an interesting thought. It's easier when I can see that Jared's just got a bunch of counter magic, but we've seen close to 4x of these spell snares that there comes a certain point where I want to try not to walk into them. For sure. Back on Jared's turn. See if he can assemble anything in the face of two frogs. Oh, my God! <laughs> He's frog. got a frog, too! And backed up by counter spell and surgical extraction, I oh think. Oh, man. Might be an unlicensed hearse. Could be a hearse. Be a hearse. I think it's a cruel ultimatum, actually. Oh, okay. A little bit. That's the that's the spice. That's the yeah, real spice. In this dimmer deck. How about this ephemera my phalagi find to fairy? Ooh. Ooh. How does your counter spell feel now? It feels real good, I think. <laughs> I think that's a yeah. big big old target. It's a fairy time raveler. But Isaac's got all the food to feed to these frogs. And at least this one card in hand mm -hmm. to be able to win the frog on frog combat as well. It's bits of three, right? It's yeah, three to jump it. Yep. Three to jump it. Jared uh. could jump his own frog, though. So I think you just mm -hmm. keep well, it on the ground. But the thing is that Isaac's frog with the counter is one power ahead and can always remain one power ahead. Mm -hmm. Jared will go into his own grave to jump his frog. Going to pick out the Whoop. all yep. the permanents, yep. I would yep. think. Yeah, seems seems wise. Mm, leave the spells for Merc died. Mm -hmm. What about what, what, what about a, can I interest you in a one of Snapcaster Mage maybe? Sure. I don't know. Love a snap. 
Loan me a snap. That card's expensive again. Did you know that? I did not. It's I crazy. I, I bought it when they were cheap. Yeah. Most people have. Jared ripped this preordain. Sees fatal push Archmage's charm. I'm at least keeping that push. I'm going to push this frog. Oh, my goodness. I'm going to walk up and I'm going to push him. Folks, if you have children listening, remind them not to touch the wildlife. Do not touch the frog. And don't push him. Don't push him. No. No, he was so young. <laughs> it's okay. Isaac's got another one at parody here. One psych. Oh, not parody. We got a Falaji for uh, for Isaac. So slight, <laughs> right, whoa, slight whoa, whoa, advantage whoa, there. Excuse me. Can't count it out just yet. It, it can turn sideways, too. Jared using the frog, getting there for damage, drawing the card we knew, which was the Archmage's Charm, which we can't cast right now. But Isaac knows that Jared kept it, and you kind of got to be careful. Gain indulgence, I don't think. Definitely need to discard there, because he's pitched so many to the frog, right? Or am I... Oh... Um. It's five, just five cards? Five different... Five mana values. Mana values. So specific. Yes. It's a very hard thing to try to check for in a game that rarely ever cares about it. Indeed. Frog will again go at Jerry, bring him to six, to Isaac's 13. It's looking pretty good for Isaac at this point. Jared's not out yet. We'll play that Archmage charm. Isaac has a response. And most likely the fluster we know about here. Can you pay two? You sure can't. Sure, sure can't. And now Storm Isaac count. Isaac with the two cards in hand can attack for exact lethal. Pitch both these to the frog, get in there with both of these. No, these are zero power flagers right now. Yeah. Just the frog. It can turn sideways. They sure can. They sure can. They can attack. Oh, big rips. And it's a uh, land. It's the island. The Merfolk Island will not be enough to get him there. Isaac Van Til is your winner of the night and maybe of the whole darn thing. Isaac sure seems to think so. We'll find out. He uh, was a ASAP. big favorite at the beginning of this, uh, of, in the beginning of the night, and he has performed, I think that's his fifth 4 0 Jeez. out of 12 weeks. Insane performance from him. Good job to Jared as well. Great 3-1 on the night with a fantastic deck as well. Lots of good games all around tonight, folks. Before we head out, I'd like to thank you for joining us here at Nerd Rage Gaming, the energy store stream. That's us. If you'd like to support us, the best way to do so is to buy cards on our website, nerdragegaming.com. We have tens of thousands of magic cards available Jeez. to ship countrywide. Arrive in time for your event. Um, like the Energy Series event up in Madison, or you can schedule for in-store pickup as well. We also stock um, non-magic cards as well. Pokemon, Digimon, One Piece, Lorcana, and soon-to-be Union Arena. If any of that oh interests goodness. you, check out our pro page. It's on the banner at the top of the website of the Energy st uh, storefront. So you don't need to remember that one because it's a little bit harder. Check out nerdragegaming.com if you'd like to ask uh, any questions to us at the store, talk to the players tonight, get the lowdown on when the le next league is starting up, check out our Discord. We've got all sorts of great stuff there. That's where all of our pre-order announcements go, special sales. we got a new weekly hot list, hashtag okay. all the rage. I saw the hashtag. You yes. like that? I, I worked really hard on it. That was you? Thank you. That's good. Thank you, yeah. 50 new cards every single week that will get you the best bang for your buck. Check it out in the Discord today. Because that helps us stock our inventory for Madison, August 24th and 25th. We've got a double 10K Ooh. showdown. We're sending four people to champs. We're giving away so much prize money. So much money. We got side events as well. Oversized cards, uncut sheets, ultimate guard product, feature matches, custom tokens from Inkling Customs. So okay. much good stuff. I'm going to be there playing. I hope you bring your A game because I'm bringing mine. If you like <laughs> any of the three formats that we are featuring in Madison, Standard, Modern, or Legacy, get in the Discord and find yourself a team so you can play. We'd love to see you there. 
Dom, it's been a great league. It's been a great league. We've had such a blast. We'll be back next week with non-league play, so don't worry about that. We'll feature some Bloomboro decks, maybe. Maybe some meme week incoming. The folks love an excuse to play the weird ones. I love a meme week. We love Alluris. And I love you, viewers. I hope you have a great night. Thank you so much for joining us. Take care. Bye.